Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request, my apologies, I didn't get your name, but hi Cap. I recently watched Smarter Every Day's video where he went supersonic in a Thunderbirds F-16. In the video, he highlights the fact that the altimeter is affected by the pressure change as the aircraft goes transonic and then supersonic. I was wondering if this phenomenon is modeled in the dials in DCS. Very interesting. I, ha I haven't noticed anything, but we'll see. I have linked the video below and them going supersonic curves just after 11 minutes. Destin then talks about the physics behind the altimeter going crazy, which is very interesting to watch. Let's bring that up. Next, we went supersonic. We took the jet to mill power, which means the fastest the engine will go without the afterburner, and we went for it. Here we go. AB. There's the mock, man. We just broke it. 1.02, 1.04. Yeah, the altimeter went crazy. Now watch what happens when I go idle. See yourself slow down like that? Oh, wow. Yeah. And the altimeter went ballistic. Yeah, it kind of went crazy, right? And let's skip forward to the physics. But the pressure behind the shock wave is what's called a rarefaction, meaning it's at a lower pressure. If we have a shock wave on the front here, that means the static port is going to be behind that shock wave in that rarefaction, which means it's going to see a lower pressure. So thank you for him to explaining that. And of course, we'll link uh, his video in our description. So the rarefaction zone that's there temporarily as we're going through Mach 1 is affecting the static pressure measurement. And that's what's giving us the strange effect on our dials. Let's go and see if we can do it in DCS. So whether this rarefaction, low pressure, temporary low pressure is modeled in DCS is probably going to be specific to the aeroplane. So rather than the DCS world model, it, it probably will or will not be modeled in the actual aircraft. So the closest we've got to the guy in the movie is going to be the F-16CM Block 50. Let's give it a go. Altitude 6,000 feet. Altitude's not really going to make any difference. And there we are, 0.75 Mach. And where's our steam gauge? It's best to be sitting. There's our steam gauge. Okay, so off we go. In fact, we can see the Mach there as well. 0.94. 0.96. Point nine seven, one point nine eight. Afterburner going on. 0.99. Mac one and nothing. Ever so quickly try at high altitude just to make sure. Okay, about twenty thousand feet. I think that's what it was on the uh, in the movie. Mac zero point eight four, zero point nine five. Through sand barrier and nothing no so it's not measured in there one thing uh, that i've just noticed i've never really seen in an f-16 cockpit apart from on that video that you know there's in my memory i've just realized how good the f-16 is modeled compared to that real life f-16 the radar just looks exactly the same in how kind of crap it looks it looks proper nintendo 8-bit in the real f-16 doesn't it and it's exactly what it looks at here really nintendo 8-bit so i'm really chuffed with that no not modeled let's just try the other planes because you never know okay hornet mobile uh, if I can remember where my Mac is, there it is. Much slower this aircraft, so it's going to take a little longer. It's going to be a bit more awkward. There's our uh, barometric altimeter down here. 0.92, 95, 96, 97, and watching. And nothing. Disappointing. Let's try the mighty Tomcat. The big boy, where's the altimeter? There it is. There's the main primary barometric altimeter. Uh, where is the max going to be here? And we can even probably show it on there as well. Off we go. 9.4, 9.5, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9, 9.10, 9.11, 9.12, 9.13, 9.14, 9.15, 9.16, 9.17, 9.18, 9.19, 9.20, 9.21, 9.22, 9.23, 
try it again. It's kind of a little bit confusing to me because it looks a bit different to the F-16, but let's, let's go burn her on. Right, so... Yeah, you see, that's moving, but that's not! It's friggin' modelled! Idle! Yeah! And this shows, if nothing else, the beautiful, beautiful nerdiness of Heat Blur. They are just so nerdy, they invented the word nerd. Everything in the Tomcat is modelled. And I mean nerdy in a good way. I mean, you know, this is what we want. This is so amazing. So, one thing we can say is that rarefaction should affect the altimeter in all planes as far as I can as far as I'm aware definitely the F-16 as we saw in, in in the real life thing so in that case all planes should be affected I think in DCS world but the only one it appears to be modeled in at least that we found is the F-14B um I had some stream guys on the stream saying it shouldn't be modeled because it's going to be too much computation I disagree I think that you can model it very easily just by faking it I mean it's probably not modeled you know they probably haven't done proper fluid modeling for that little effect there they probably just know that it's a thing and just made it look like you know a rarefaction uh, effect so i think as long as you can make it look like it that's that's you know near enough for a, for a simulator game whatever you want to call it i guess that's all i want to say i'm just really impressed uh, so th just find some really impressive things about this sim sometimes and um, that's one of them i hope you enjoyed that and see you later